After starring as Ron Weasley in the Harry Potter franchise, Rupert Grint seemed ready to rule Hollywood, but a series of poorly received films and odd personal choices have kept the actor from fully embracing the spotlight. What happened? Here's why Hollywood won't cast Rupert Grint anymore. Letting go of one of the most iconic roles in pop culture is clearly no easy task. Rupert Grint has admitted that even he has trouble separating himself from Ron. He told Vulture in 2017, I think it'll always be with me. I had a weird relationship with that character because after that, we kind of merged into the same person. I find it very hard to separate where I end and Ron begins. But closing the Harry Potter chapter of his life was so tough that Grint considered quitting acting altogether. He told Entertainment Weekly in 2017, We had such an intimate and intense few years in this bubble. I wanted to live a little bit. I felt like I'd missed out on a lot. It was nice to just be away from it and not have any kind of commitments at all, and just be a bit free. Compared to fellow Harry Potter stars Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson, Grint took on a much lighter workload between Potter films. Appearing in only three indie projects toward the end of the series, he missed out on truly showcasing his acting skills when all eyes were on him. During his aforementioned sabbatical, Rupert Grint experimented with odd jobs. He told the Daily Mail in 2014 that he purchased an ice cream truck as his first car because of childhood ambition, saying, My first ambition was to become an ice cream man. I'm not allowed to sell my merchandise. I'd need a license for that. I'll drive around the local villages, and if I see some kids looking like they're in need of ice creams, I'll pull over and dish them out for free. In 2011, Grimp became a hotelier, opening Rigsby's Guest House in Hartford, England. The boutique hotel turned out to be a money pit, and Grint shut it down four years later, having reportedly made less than $3,000 in profit. But it could be that Grint's true calling is in the animation department. Hardcore Harry Potter fans may remember when the actor drew an exaggerated doodle of the late Alan Rickman as Professor Snape. It was a doodle which Rickman fortunately loved. I made him sign it, and I have it in my possession. <laughs> and I'm very fond of it. It turns out that drawing wasn't just something Grint did to combat boredom on set as a kid. It's actually one of his major passions. And he's kept this impressive skill in his back pocket for a possible future work. He told The Mirror, I'd like to go into animation one day. I draw a lot, a lot of disturbing cartoons. It helps me unwind. When Rupert Grint finally returned to acting, he slowly eased back into the game with a few guest spots on the small screen. Acting in shows on both sides of the Atlantic, he lent his talents to programs like the animated Fox series American Dad and the UK's folklore-based comedy Urban Myths. Is this a torch. The marble lions, they are horses. But of course, Grit also took advantage of his famous face and name recognition. In 2010, before the final Harry Potter film was released, he turned up for an appearance on the popular car show Top Gear, alongside Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May. Then, in 2016, he starred as himself in the first episode of Tracy Ullman's show. But unfortunately for Grint, none of those non-Potter appearances made much of a splash. And on the film side of his career, things weren't much better. Honestly, it's a shame he couldn't borrow Ron Weasley's wand to conjure up better roles. When Rupert Grint returned to the big screen in 2013, it was anything but magical. The actor's first three post-Potter films were both critical and commercial failures. Into the White, a Norwegian World War II film, saw only a limited release and received mixed reviews due to its slow pacing, predictable plot, and overall, quote, bland nature. CBGB, a historical punk rock drama which featured his former Harry Potter co-star Alan Rickman and actress Malin Ackerman, was panned by critics, earning a mere 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. However, the worst received of all was Charlie Countryman, a psychological dramedy in which Grimp plays a wannabe adult film star. Commenting on the film, Variety called it, quote, a profoundly unnecessary movie, noting, Strained attempts at magic realism will leave viewers more irritated than enchanted. Also critical of the movie, The New York Times wrote, this catastrophe of a movie zigzags drunkenly between action-adventure and surreal comedy with some magical realism slapped over it like ketchup. One of Grint's most notable post-Potter roles was one in which he didn't even appear on the screen. In 2014, he shot off his pipes voicing Josh, a video game-obsessed pop star in Postman Pat, the movie. The animated film received mixed reviews. Critics overwhelmingly praised the voice actor's performances but felt the plot was too complicated and scary for kids. The Guardian called it, quote, a misjudgment, while The Hollywood Reporter wrote, Postman Pat, the movie, is a mostly charmless and dark affair. Grint's big return to film should have come with 2016's Moonwalkers. He played a seedy band manager who joins a thuggish CIA agent to stage the moon landing. Not your back. You're not Stanley Kubrick. I'm playing Stanley Kubrick. The actor told MTV News, I just thought it was so ridiculous. It really at no moment takes itself seriously. Unfortunately, the movie saw only a limited release and was hit with negative criticism. RogerEbert.com said, Moonwalkers is a fake comedy, one that mistakes an endless bloody splatter fest of a finale for the height of hilarity and never quite gets off the ground after takeoff. 
In 2013, Grin signed on to a project that had the potential to turn him into a television star in the States. CBS's pilot for Super Clyde was a comedy about a nerdy, neurotic food service worker who becomes an unlikely superhero when he inherits a ton of cash from a dead relative. While the pilot was well-received, the network opted not to pick it up to series. Adding insult to injury, CBS later decided to move forward without Grant attached to the show in 2015, reordering a second pilot to be shot with a brand new cast. The NBC pilot for Imperial City suffered a similar fate. In 2015, Grant was cast as the lead in this one-hour drama playing a low-level New York City office employee who becomes obsessed with his late father's comic book series, Imperial City. And in a twist, Grint's character soon discovers that the fantasy world in the comics turns out to be real. Speaking with MTV News in 2016, Grint shared that he was excited about the show because he had, quote, always loved comics. Unfortunately, Grint's personal excitement over Imperial City just didn't catch on with the right people, and the series never got off the ground. Grint further distanced himself from Hollywood by pursuing work in theater, but here, the results were much more positive. In 2013, he made a stage debut on The West End in London in Jess Butterworth's controversial black comedy Mojo. His performance earned rave reviews and a What's On Stage award for Best Newcomer. He made his Broadway debut the following year in Terrence McNally's farce It's Only a Play. The actor told MTV News, "...that was really educational, actually, being on stage. I fell in love with acting again." In 2016, The Sun ran a scathing yet worrisome piece about Grint. The gossip rag suggested a correlation between the actor's dwindling career and his supposed health issues, alleged drinking and partying, and a reported lack of focus and drive. A source told the tabloid, Rupert is exceptionally unfocused right now. The insider further claimed that Grint had reached both a personal and professional low point, saying, He wanted to be a leading man on stage and screen, but at the moment he is neither. He's really disillusioned with his life and work. While Grint has largely remained silent about rumors of his alleged partying ways, as well as any dissatisfaction with his life, he has opened up about his apparent problem with saying no in social situations. Say no much to people on the street. I can't. I, 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 this one thing I just cannot do. Are the same problem. That word, no. But Grint is adamant that his life, according to the tabloids, is completely false. Speaking to The Guardian in 2018, he said, As I got older, I could feel this growing narrative willing me to get engulfed in some big scandal off screen. It felt like people were waiting for me to go off the rails, but it was never going to happen. Not unlike his Harry Potter castmates, Grimm prefers to keep his personal life private, but the actor's high-profile relationships, particularly his rumored on-again, off-again romance with Angus, Thongs, and perfect snogging actress Georgia Groom, have sometimes overshadowed his professional pursuits. While neither celeb has confirmed their relationship status, the two have been linked since 2011. Though Grint's alleged relationship with Groom appears to be an open secret in the entertainment industry, it doesn't seem like either film star has any plans to comment on their supposed romance, even after sparking marriage rumors in April 2019. But that doesn't mean Grint isn't thinking about taking that next step. He told The Guardian, "...I'd like to settle down and have kids soon. If I had a son, would I call him Ron? It's quite a good name, but probably not." And Grint's a tough name to pair a one-syllable first name with. While Rupert Grint may have been willing to make the temporary move to New York City for his stint on Broadway, he has no real plans to pursue work in the United States if it means leaving his home country for good. He told The Mirror in 2014, "...I like England. It's my home." Grint has apparently jumped into the real estate game back home as well. Over the years, he's purchased a number of properties in England, specifically in Hertfordshire, where he and his family live. He apparently acquired the homes through his company, Evil Plan Properties. And while he and his parents reside in two of the homes, at least one of the actor's properties is reportedly being rented out to locals. While Rupert Grint is a longtime supporter of a number of causes, he focuses much of his time and energy on raising awareness for child health initiatives. In 2011, he began working with Cancer Research UK. He told the Birmingham Mail that it was, quote, "...a privilege to support the charity's Little Star Award," saying, "...the awards are a fantastic way of recognizing the bravery and courage of all children and their families who have been affected by cancer." In 2014, Grint became an ambassador for the Starlight Children's Foundation, which grants wishes to sick children. He told Third Sector, "...I am delighted, and I look forward to doing more to support this wonderful charity." Rupert Grint has quietly struggled to make his post-Potter mark in the entertainment industry, but it isn't a struggle he's particularly concerned with. He told The Independent, "...I'm not the most ambitious person. I'm quite laid back in that respect. I'm pretty content with how things are going." That said, the well-liked actor's career prospects have shifted in recent years. In 2017, Grint scored the role of hustler Charlie Cavendish in Crackle's crime drama Snatch, on which he also serves as executive producer. "...Keep an eye out. I'll be at the bar. It's the best vantage point now." Grint also won the part of insurance rep Daniel Glass, who faces an existential crisis after being misdiagnosed with a terminal illness, in the black comedy Sick Note. In 2019, fans got to enjoy Grint's performance as Inspector Chrome in the BBC miniseries The ABC Murders. Rounding out the 2010s, the actor scored a major role as Julian Pierce in M. Night Shyamalan's Apple Plus psychological thriller series Servant. With his career finally back on track, Grint reflected on his time in Tinseltown in 2018, telling The Guardian, 
I peaked pretty early, but I'm fine with that. It would be ridiculous to think that you can replicate that level of success. It's always going to be a challenge, but it's quite fun to surprise people. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.